The Structure of the Leaf by kscience.com. I'm drawing the waxy cuticle of the leaf. This is a clear layer of the leaf that is transparent to allow light through for photosynthesis. I'm now drawing the palisade cells of the palisade mesophyll layer. The palisade cells have got cell walls because they are plant cells. They've also got nuclei because they are eukaryotes and vacuoles because they are plant cells. They've got many chloroplasts to absorb as much light as possible for photosynthesis. This is the mesophyll layer of the leaf. The mesophyll layer is below the palisade cells. They have got fewer chloroplasts than the palisade cells, so less photosynthesis occurs here. This is the lower epidermis of the leaf. It is the underside of the leaf with guard cells and stomata, which we're going to talk about later and also in another video. These tubes here are known as the xylem and the phloem. These supply the leaf with water and take sugar away from the leaf. We're now going to go through the adaptations of the leaf. The top layer of the leaf is known as the waxy cuticle, the waxy cuticle, and it is transparent. The waxy cuticle is transparent, and this is so it allows light through to the palisade cells. The palisade mesophyll cells are tissue in the plant. So we've got the palisade cells that make up the palisade mesophyll layer. These palisade cells have got many chloroplasts. They've got many chloroplasts to increase the rate of photosynthesis. If you increase the rate of photosynthesis, you're producing more glucose for the plant. You've got tubes that supply water to the leaf and they are called the xylem. And you've got tubes called the phloem that transports sucrose away from the leaf. The next part here is the spongy mesophyll tissue, the spongy mesophyll tissue, which contains air spaces. So they contain air spaces. Air spaces increase the surface area of the mesophyll layer, and that then increases the rate of diffusion of gases through the mesophyll layer. You've now got the guard cells. These guard cells allow for an opening called the stomata. So the guard cells surround the stomata. The water enters the leaf from the roots via the xylem and the sucrose exits via the phloem. So the xylem transports water and the phloem transports glucose as sucrose. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. We're now going to look at how carbon dioxide enters the leaf from the atmosphere through the stomata. Carbon dioxide exists in a higher concentration outside the leaf than inside the leaf. So there's a higher concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. Therefore, CO2 will diffuse. It will diffuse through the stomata. It diffuses through the stomata into the airspace, whereby it diffuses to the palisade cells. So CO2 will now diffuse through the airspace to the palisade cells from a high to low concentration. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Water enters the airspace of the leaf via the xylem, and it too will diffuse to the chloroplasts in the palisade cells. So now photosynthesis can take place in the chloroplasts, whereby CO2 from the atmosphere is going to react with water, which is brought by the roots, in the chloroplasts. Now light is going to hit the chlorophyll in the chloroplast to give energy to produce oxygen. Oxygen is now going to diffuse from the chloroplast from a high to low concentration through the airspace and it will then diffuse out of the stomata from a high to low concentration. So oxygen is going to diffuse out of the stomata and then glucose is formed. Glucose is the sugar 
and is transported away from the chloroplast and the leaf via the phloem. Press pause to practice using those key words. The answers will follow. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. And if you're stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. Visit kscience.com for more free videos, worksheets and quizzes at kscience.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe.